good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever it is you are in your day. Here we are, still sheltering in grace. And this is Billy Ruth Hopkins for Ricci again with another episode of um, quantum transformation theory and practice with the transformation wheel. It's the seven step transformation wheel and the seven step D dispel to dispel the myths. Um, you know, I was looking into my bathroom at one point and I still have this etching that I used to have when I was unhappily married in Ben Lomond, California as Billy Hooper. So this would have been 1970 probably when I wrote this poem. It doesn't have a date on it, but um, it's called Real Meditation. I used to do these bathtub meditations. And I want to show you what I was looking at when I was doing this bathtub meditation. See if you can see this. Um, this is the etching I would meditate on. Now, if you notice, there's a water damage area down here that that acts as an interesting visual, a, a perception. The perception that I had when I was watching this, this etching, I was looking at this etching, and the perception came to me that there is that there was a face in and let's see, I'll find it for you. Okay, now if you see her knee, look at her knee and her leg. There's a face. I saw a face in there. I can't actually see it right now. It's so interesting. But we have these, we, we, our reality is based on what we see, of course, and what we draw into our emotional and cognitive body as my genius nephew says in his new book called Who You Are. You have to get it actually. You should get that book. Who You Are by Michael J. Spivey. He's a professor of cognitive science at Merced. Cognitive psychology. And he started out in linguistics, psycholinguistics. At any rate, he is a genius. And one of the things that I got reading his book the other night was that, that our perceptions, our life is actually an embodiment of what we have gained over the years. We all know this, but he's based it in his scientific experiments. And so the reality of our life is based on what we perceive and what we draw into our being. So this poem I found that I wrote in 1970, I just wanted to read it to you because it describes that very syndrome of how we can, how the, the, the paradigm shift of our lives is based on what we perceive and how we can change those perceptions. So here is the poem, Real Meditation. I have my own private vision in the knee and the leg of the girl in the etching on my bathroom wall. It is nothing even close to what one might expect to see in a knee and a leg on a girl in an etching on the bathroom wall. No, not at all. At first I thought it is me, myself, that what I saw or seemed to see was an ancient face from another age. Across the leg, a mouth, and over the mouth, the mustache lay. A shadow formed the quite long nose. 
and the eyes had such a glaze like seeing through an older mirror into an older way. It's there, all there. It is very clear to me. And there are times when my vision speaks or moves its mouth as if to say a word or two, it seems. And I have even read its lips a time or two. I've made it out. The words meant something real to me. Of course, they're not to share. But that's the nature of a vision. It is private. It is pure. And most any transcription might just render it obscure, like the jar in Tennessee or the woman in the mall beside the building in Chicago. I remember when we all walked around her, taking guesses and not knowing that they called her woman. It was very clear to me she was a bird, a skeletal impression of the predator, the male who hangs around, hunched shoulders, glassy-eyed, and waits for some mistaken step from some passerby, and then it pounces. Politicians, someone said, the Chicago type who lies. Or is it all just suspicion, just a myth? Well, who can say? That vision was not mine. It was not clear to me, or anyone, or thee, perhaps. But that's the nature of a vision. It is private. It is pure, and most any transcribition. Then I saw that was untrue. That's not an image of an older you or anyone, I said out loud unto myself, because I know darn well it was projection of what someone once had said to me about my life. About my life. Well, hell. I live inside my life, just I. And I come to see what I come to see. And my own private vision on my bathroom wall belongs, in fact, to me.